Uh, now it's time to have a quick look at how bounds um, interact with wildcards. And uh, supposing we've got this sort of uh, type arrangement over here. And uh, we've got this generic type uh, with type parameter t. It's uh, a type parameter, not a type, uh, which extends k, k being over there. And uh, what that means is that uh, anything you supply to GN is going to is going to end, uh, end up in this uh, outer outer area there. Now, um, here's this uh, test class here where we've uh, defined various types. I've set them all to null so that the compiler doesn't complain when we play around with them. And um, you'll see that all of this is quite acceptable. Um, the wildcard form, which is a whole lot. Uh, something which extends A, which is the same thing, it turns out. And um, similarly, this lot down here, it's all fine. What you can't do is something like a GN of A, that's not, not allowed, and that will give a compiler error because um, A is not a uh, subtype of K, that's why. And uh, similarly, if you try something like um, something which is super A, um, that would just be that lot, and uh, that's not a subtype of K, so that's not allowed. Now if we try looking at see what we can set to what and therefore what subtype uh, relationship is, you'll see that, um, that the general wildcard form there will accept absolutely anything. As you might expect, that, that's uh, very tolerant. And um, if you look at the extends A, it turns out that that accepts anything as well, including the wildcard form. In fact, they, it turns out that they're both exactly equivalent. And you'd expect that because um, uh, if you look at uh, uh, what uh, the wildcard form would normally be the whole lot, but because of that uh, restriction, it's restricted to the uh, types in the um, outer set there. And uh, similarly for A, it would normally be the whole lot. Well, everything in, uh, including, it would include L and P, for instance. Normally, extends A would include L and P, but uh, the restriction, of course, uh, cuts those out. So it's um, again effectively the stuff in this um, outer blue area there. So it's exactly the same in effect. It takes exactly the same form. It's hard to distinguish between the two. Um, now, if we look at uh, what else we got, um, something which is uh, super Q um, that can, uh, yeah, test of. Uh, Super K, Super K would um, just be K by itself, of course, and um, uh, Super Q would be uh, Q, F, and K. So you can certainly set one thing to the other like that without any problems. Let's have a look at what you can't do. Um, something like uh, extends F and Super Q. Extends F would be uh, F, Q, and R, and Super Q would just be uh, well Q, F, and K. And those uh, don't um, uh, one of those sets is not contained in the other, so it uh, doesn't work. Now, um, the important thing to bear in mind here is that you've got to look at the, all of this from the compiler's point of view. Okay, so one thing you've got to remember is that um, uh, the compiler, when it's compiling away something like this and looking at n, it can tell, for instance, what the superclasses of n are. Now, what it can't do is tell that you're going to come along later and extend n. So it can't tell what the subclasses are, because uh, you might not have even written them yet. It can't, can't, tell, it can't tell what they are. So the step that you've got to remember that writing a subclass shouldn't then invalidate some relationship that already exists. So for example, supposing you thought uh, super n looked at super n and used in this arrangement here, then super n would be n and k. That's effectively the only things that you could set uh, super n to, n and k. And if you looked at uh, extends l in this arrangement here, well extends l is just going to be in n. So you might think that you could set um, super n equal to the extends l form, but you can't, because the compiler can't be sure that um, if it if it thought if it allowed that, what might happen is that one day later you come along and you extend n. You write another type down here, which is which is a subtype of n. And then what happens? You can't then go and invalidate what's already been decided. 
if you've got an assignment uh, between types going on it can't then say that assignment is now invalid in a completely separate piece of code when it goes and compiles the thing that you've written to extend n because that's what would happen because our would then include n and whatever you've extended and the two types then don't overlap and things go wrong so anyway, any assignment would then not be valid so effectively um, what I'm saying is that um, you've got to be careful there. there's not much um, you can't really uh, um, you've got to be very careful about whether you can um, assign one thing to another because you've got to allow for the possibility of stuff being added so for example um, something like this for instance is okay um, test of um, uh, this for example uh, extends a and uh, you can set that to super n and it knows that that's perfectly valid because extends a uh, will take you down to k for a star because of that and therefore it's going to include every, the whole lot every possibility is therefore going to be included when it extends a so automatically um, test of uh, super, super n for instance is um, automatically going to be a subset of it doesn't matter which way you look at it so uh, that assignment is going to be perfectly okay in that instance right so uh, I'll say some more about this later um, uh, but that's uh, just a quick look at uh, uh, bounds interacting with wildcards we'll make it a bit more complex in a minute